there were a great majority of the guys who were what you'd just call the good soldiers. They were the guys you could depend on all the time. They were always there. And these kids were from farms. They, they weren't paratrooping guys, you know. They were trained to do this. And they just wanted to be the best. They wanted to look the best. They wanted to do their job the best. The idea that it's never been done before, and we're going to drop you out of a plane at a thousand feet, which means if anything goes wrong, you die. Once you've assess the situation and you realize how dangerous it is and then you go and do something perhaps that's the definition of true courage these guys were everything to each other in a way that i think they were more than more than family it is a story of courage and comradeship endurance and sacrifice executive producers tom hanks steven spielberg and hbo recreate the true story of easy company an elite World War II parachute infantry regiment in the epic miniseries Band of Brothers, based on the best-selling book by Stephen Ambrose. It followed one group of guys from literally their, the, them signing up for training to the end of the European War. Took, jumped in Normandy on D-Day and fought in Holland for the Market Garden and then were in the Battle of the Bulge. Very well chronicled all the way through. The massive production spanned three years and cost over $120 million, primarily shooting on an 1,100-acre backlot in Hatfield, England. A 12-acre village set was continually modified to portray 11 different European locations. It's about five times bigger than what we had on Saving Private Ryan. We're in Aldbourne and Up Pottery in England. We're in France, Normandy, Holland. <laughs> we're, we're in Bastogne. We're all over the place here. The costume department provided 2,000 German and American uniforms, including 500 pairs of corker and jump boots. 1,200 civilian costumes were authentic vintage clothing. On the whole project, every department has uh, the best people you can find. It's a first-rate production facility for recreating the past, as well as sort of a, the next generation of everything, the next generation of special effects, the next generation of computer-generated effects. So in some ways, it's intimidating, but in other ways, it's just, it's just incredibly fun. More than 10,000 extras worked on the miniseries, which featured 500 speaking roles. I can tell you that everybody in this pretty much had their had the role as soon as they walked through the door and opened their mouths. We had this fabulous casting session where we brought in all the guys that we said, they're easy company. Let's see how they relate to each other in different roles. And Steven operated the camera and Tom kind of like staged the the action and we would mix and match different roles. Uh, Steven was down with his video camera and he was filming and he, he asked us, me and this other guy, he said, when you say that line, can you just move this way a little bit? And uh, we said, yeah, sure, sure. And we, we got done, and boom, the scene started, and boom, before you knew it, it was over, and thank you, guys. And we were being shuffled out, and the guy said to me, he tapped me on the shoulder, he said, did I just get directed by Steven Spielberg? I said, yeah, I think you did. Senior military advisor Captain Dale Dye served on the production as a watchdog for military accuracy and trained the cast in a rigorous 10-day actor boot camp. The idea was that when they began to portray something, when the director said, you're exhausted, or the director said, you're frightened, they would have something they could reach back and touch, some sort of understanding of what exhaustion means to a soldier, what fear means to a soldier. I wanted them to know that sort of thing, and there's just no way to do it without putting them in that position. You're in barracks with a bunch of guys you've never met, and the barracks smell like feet. I remember laying in bed that night going, I'm never going to make this. I'm never going to make this 10 days. Boot camp's exhaustive 18-hour days were filled with physical training and military drills and maneuvers. Hold your fire! Do not waste your ammo. Go, runner, go. I want him on a 180. Get him around the side as well. Okay, we have somebody in here on the left-hand side. He's in a black coat. Got him? Listen, you're coming with me. Guns, go! Private, get a, get a weapon on this guy. Captain Die can tear you down, make you realize what you need to do, and then bring you right back up within a sentence. 
Now just shut up. And then you go into your thing and he goes, All right, Sergeant Laws. Turn them strikes. 1940 style jump training included jumping from a 40 foot high plain fuselage mock up. So we, we climb up this tower and um, some little woman walks up to me and um, puts this little leather strap around my waist and it's like these two little hooks. She's like, okay, you're safety in. What do you mean I'm safety in? Not safety in. She, and then she's like, go, go, I'm not safety. Jump off my one, one thousand two, bam. What the hell is that? The worst night was sleeping outside in these sleeping bags that if you got in them, it was colder than, than being outside. I saw guys taking off their socks to give other people to stay warm, and you would take your jacket off to give to someone else. You hit walls in boot camp. You hit these personal, mental, uh, physical walls that you have to go over, basically. There were guys the first night at boot camp that cried themselves to sleep, that I was there for, and they were there for me. And I came out of the whole boot camp experience doing anything for these guys. We became soldiers. I mean, I, I know when I went into boot camp, I thought I was ready for it. And when I left, I, I felt like a, a different person. You felt like you did something that no one could take away from you, the same way that no one could take away what Easy Company has done. To be a paratrooper um, in World War II, it was uh, experimental, it was elite, it was cutting edge, it was the first time it was being done. Their job was unique in that they were dropped out of planes. They had to be, in, in essence, one-man armies. They had to bring everything with them. Just the thought of when you're dropped in the middle of enemy territory, surrounded on all four sides, and that knowing that there's going to be no help, it's just you. There's a grit and a resolve that they had to just never quit. They had it beat right into them at boot camp, and they wouldn't quit then. And it prepared them for what, what they faced, and they didn't quit under the most dire conditions that really any soldiers probably could have faced. There was a scene where we're at a crossroad and we surprised a bunch of Germans in, in an apple orchard. And it was just uh, about a hundred Germans running away. Right? And then they start turning and firing at us and we're popping off clips, having to reload. It's a long shot. A whole another German platoon comes storming down this hill and starts attacking. All of a sudden this riverbed just, just explodes. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down the ground shaking. Well, I remember when I was reloading that's when you're at your most vulnerable because you can't defend yourself with your weapon and you're reloading and I'm jamming my clip in and I was having trouble because my hands were shaking and I was thinking I'm gonna get shot in the head right now while I'm not looking I'm just gonna get shot and everything's gonna turn to black and then you come out of it and you go that's what it's like when you go through years of war with guys next to you, you ha you're dependent on this person they their small mistake or their one heroic event can save your life or destroy your life. You have to bond. If you don't, if you're not one unit, you're not going to necessarily survive. You know. One of the production's most ambitious recreations occurred in the first week of shooting. I think, from a physical production standpoint, the most challenging scene was taking off for D-Day. We had hundreds and hundreds of, of extras. Uh, each of whom had to be accurately equipped and uniformed and webbed and geared up. As a paratrooper, everything you survive on, you have to carry in. You're being dropped behind enemy lines. The amount of equipment that they're carrying, getting on those planes with 100 pounds of excess equipment, just to move in these. They had to be pushed and shoved onto these planes. They could not move in them. It was a tremendous uh, feat of coordination. We had four C-47 aircraft from the period that actually could work. We wound up having, I think, seven cameras shooting the night that we had the planes take off, all in different positions. And cameras had assignments that when the planes start taxiing, you're here, and as soon as the taxi's past you, you've got to run over here so you can get the takeoff. And then when it takes off, you get this aerial shot, and then the planes will come back over the field so you can get a flyby. And everybody had multiple assignments. And it was, uh, it was pretty thrilling to watch those, those old planes roaring around. It was pretty great. kind of knew that some of you wouldn't be coming back. You kind of knew some of you were going to make it. I mean, I 